jobs. They're how Americans prove that they deserve health care. Right now, America is experiencing a big change in what it means to have a job, and especially what it means when your job treats you like crap. So let's find out what people are doing about it in another installment of Labor Pains. We've talked a lot lately about the unprecedented labor issues sweeping across the country right now. With more job openings than ever and more people quitting than ever, workers suddenly find themselves with a lot of leverage. And they're using it to demand things like better pay, more flexible hours, and canceling the annual company squid game. And a lot of companies are giving into these demands, but not all of them. Which is why all around the country right now, you're seeing this happen. This week, 10,000 workers at agriculture equipment manufacturer Deere & Company made their voices heard. It's the first strike for the United Auto Workers Union in 35 years, and just the latest in a string of labor actions across the country. More than 24,000 employees at healthcare provider Kaiser Permanente have voted to authorize a strike, as more than 1,000 workers at cereal maker Kellogg began their own strike. With more disputes looming across other industries, some are calling this month Striketober. That's right, Striketober! It's a great month to hit the picket lines because you're out on the street and it's an easy segue into trick-or-treating. Who got the power? We got the power! Ding dong! Who got the Twix? You got the Twix! And right now, workers from so many different industries are striking. Although, it's none of the bad industries that you wish would go on strike. Like, have you ever noticed how the people who collect student loans, they never go on strike? Or telemarketers, come on, you guys deserve better pay! Now, going on strike, is not a step that workers take lightly. It's a major decision, you know, you risk your jobs, you lose out on pay, you have to protest in front of your workplace, but you can't go in to pee. Which means that when people do go on strike, they probably have pretty good reasons for doing it. Take an iconic American brand, John Deere. They had profits of $4.7 billion in just the first three quarters of this pandemic year. Workers say, they power that. They're demanding better pay, secure pensions, a fair share of a hugely profitable American company. The company wants to eliminate pensions altogether for new people, and we refuse to sell people down the road like that. Sounds like it's about sticking together. Yes, it's about ways. sticking together now and for the people that come after us. And about better pay. Yes, absolutely. The company, their profits have just been through the roof. John Deere's profits grew by 61% in recent years, and their CEO's salary grew by 160% during the pandemic. We're the ones that make your stuff. We've earned it. Give it to us. End of discussion. Well, the man makes a solid point. I mean, the CEO got a 160% pay raise while screwing over his workers? That's a horrible idea, man. Especially when your getaway vehicle is a tractor. You'll never catch me, peasants! Ha <laughs> <laughs> You're still here. <laughs> but once I get into... No, oh, this only has one gear. <laughs> Maybe we should talk. You know, honestly, some of these CEOs get so greedy that they become short-sighted. Because if they thought about it, they would realize they could probably get away with exploiting their workers for longer if they just exploited them a little less. But if you don't give them anything, well, then it's really easy to notice the disparity. Wait a minute, are you cutting my pension? Sorry, there's just not enough gold to go around. <laughs> oh, I choked on some gold. But workers have different reasons for going on strike. At John Deere, they're basically looking for the company to simply share a bigger piece of their giant profits and not cut their pensions. But over at Kellogg's, one of the big complaints of the workers is that in order for you to get your cereal in the morning, they have to work morning, noon, and night. For any time that someone would feel sick or whatever, they want you to use your vacation days as opposed to having sick days. And again, in working excess of 120 days in a row. You know, best friend died. Yeah, sorry, not my problem, that's yours. We got cereal to make. We work seven days a week. We are literally scheduled seven days a week. So in order for me to get a day off, someone else is working 16 hours. Very often, we don't even know that we have to work 16 hours until 10 minutes before it's time to go home. If you have dogs, if you have kids you have to pick up from school, if you have other obligations, I hope you have somebody to call because you have to stay. Yeah, 
I'm not gonna lie, when I heard how brutal these hours were, I was shocked. Like, what the hell, Kellogg's? You shouldn't be working people to the bone for cereal. We can all eat a pancake once in a while, it's fine. No one's gonna die. And it's not just inhumane to treat employees this way. It also goes against the Kellogg's brand image of like cheerful, colorful cartoon mascots. You know, if Kellogg's keeps this up, those games on the back of the box are gonna start getting a lot less cheerful. You guys better watch out. So, not wanting to be worked to death seems like a pretty reasonable demand. But so far, these companies aren't giving in. And what's funny to me is how some of these companies are trying to get by without their workers. Like, for instance, John Deere. They reportedly redirected their office employees to work on the factory floors. And one of those workers, get this, immediately crashed a tractor, which of course was gonna happen. I mean, office workers do not have the skill set to work in a factory. You hand them a wrench and they'll be like, okay, do I use this to check my emails? Oh, and look what happened when one distillery hired a non-union truck driver who was very passionate about not supporting the truck driver's strike. A semi-truck overturned on Wednesday near the Heaven Hill Distillery in Nelson County, where workers are currently on strike. Union officials said the replacement driver made an obscene gesture towards strikers, causing him to lose control of the vehicle, which then flipped over. Oh, you see that? That's karma. And by the way, if you can't flip someone off while driving, you shouldn't be driving anything. And that's a fundamental driving skill. Parallel parking, three-point turn, go f yourself. Those are the basics. You know, the worst part is that he flipped over right in front of the other people who were striking. How do you save face after that, right? You flip them off, yeah, and then Wah! You probably just gotta play it off like you're join joining the strike. You know, your truck flips and it's just like Wah! <laughs> Yeah, I, I flipped the truck to support you guys. We're striking for medical benefits, right? Because I think I screwed up my back. Ah. So, where is all this headed? Well, I don't know, but I hope these companies start treating their employees like people and not just money-making machines. And if they don't do that, well, then they should at least be honest in their TV commercials. Frosted Flakes is the only cereal flavored with the tears of the people who made it. They're exploited. Seems right to me.